Good morning. We are going to be reading about ecosystems today. So we have recently been looking at abiotic factors. Do you remember what an abiotic factor is? Non-living factors. So that would include rock, soil, air, sunlight, water. Uh, so we have found out that those are some needs of plants and animals, both. We're going to be reading from our Delta Reader. So there is um, this book that is available on Brightthinker. So you've got the PDF right there. Feel free if there are ever times that you've watched this video and then when you do an assignment, you're a little confused. Instead of watching this video over again, you can just go straight on Brightthinker and pull up the book. Um, it is always going to be there. It's not in your to-do list, but if you go to the science folder and look at ecosystems, it is right there. So we have found out that there are several needs of plants, different, and some are the same, but some are different for animals. For example, plants need air, water, light, nutrients like minerals in the soil, and space to live. They need to be able to have their roots extend, for example. Now, animals also need air, water. Now, they need food not just light and water that they can make their own food with, but they need to either eat other animals or eat plants. They also need shelter. So they need to have some sort of protection, whether that is protection from other animals that are predators or protection from the elements like weather and space to live. So we've learned about that. We're going to continue reading from our Delta Reader. So I'll present my screen so you can follow along with me now. Okay, here is our book. And oops, let me zoom out again. Hmm, sorry, boys and girls. Let me see. Okay, I may have to zoom out more. Oh, there we go. Okay, we'll just do that. Now, producers, consumers, and decomposers. So food has stored energy in it. Organisms use the energy in food to live and grow. We can group organisms by the way that they get food. An organism can be one of three things, a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer. Now, these three categories are for all organisms, so that includes plants and animals. Producer, consumer, decomposer. Now, producers are organisms that make their own food. What do you think that includes? Plants, right? Now, green plants are producers. They use carbon dioxide gas from the air, energy from the sunlight, and water from the soil to make their food. They have that all come together in a process called photosynthesis. We have heard about that um, a couple of times um, because we have learned all three of those Greek words in photosynthesis. Photos, which means light. Sin, or in the Greek way we say soon. What does that mean? With and together. And thesis means to put place or position. So it's putting all of these things together with light. Now, producers are very important to the animals in an ecosystem. Animals depend on producers, such as plants, for food. So even if um, there is an animal that is not able to make their own food, they need those plants that do make their own food. Some animals eat plants. Other animals eat animals that have eaten plants. Producers also give off oxygen. So these plants that make their own food, they're giving off oxygen. We need oxygen, right? All animals need oxygen. Oxygen is a gas that animals, including us, us need to breathe. Okay. 
So here is the other category, and I'm sure you're looking at the cute little pictures down here. So we've got some, cons some consumers in these three categories and some decomposers we're going to look at. Now, animals cannot make their own food like plants do. Animals are consumers. Can you say consumers? To consume means to take in, like eat. Consumers are living things that eat or consume uh, other living things. Consumers get energy from their food. So energy comes from the sun to the plants, then the plants to an animal, and then possibly another animal gets it from that animal. They also get nutrients such as vitamins and min minerals. There are three main kinds of consumers, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Can you say herbivores? Silent H there. Herbivores eat only plants. You might've heard the word herbs before that your parents might use for cooking. Okay, so herbivores only eat plants. Some animals only eat plants. Can you think of some examples of that? Like a rabbit or turtle, right? A carnivore eats only animals, only animals. You might think of some predators that are carnivores, like a lion, for example. Now, omnivores eat both plants and animals. Most of us as humans are omnivores. We eat both. If we choose to eat only plants, then we would be you know, an herbivore or vegetarian. Um, and I don't know anybody who eats only animals. That would not be good for us. A consumer that hunts and eats other animals is called a predator. Can you say predator? So an animal that is at the top of its food chain that is hunting down other animals like this great white shark. They are a predator. The animal that a predator hunts and eats is called the prey. So whatever is being eaten is the prey. Consumers help keep an ecosystem in balance. They do this by eating other living things. This helps keep the populations in a community from getting too large. So it might be sad to think of any animal eating another animal, but it's actually what's best for the world. It's best for the ecosystem if things are in balance. Okay, here are an example of each of these three types consume, of consumers, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Now, a koala is an herbivore. Koalas eat mainly eucalypt, eucalyptus leaves. Deer, cows, and grasshoppers are also herbivores. Those are just some examples. Now, a great white shark is a carnivore. Great white sharks hunt and eat fish, seals, sea lions, and even small whales. Wolves, lions, and snakes are also carnivores. Some carnivores are called scavengers. Now, scavengers eat animals that are already dead, like a vulture and shrimp. Those are both scavengers. So they're still eating meat, they're eating other animals, but they've just already died. Those are important for an ecosystem too, to have something like a vulture that is eating things that are dead before they decompose. Now, a, um, an omnivore might be like a bear, a black bear. Some black bears eat berries in the summer and nuts in the fall. Then they eat ants and bees in the spring. Hard to imagine a large mammal like that eating such small things like insects and berries, but they do. Now, raccoons, blue jays, and, and most people are omnivores. So omnivores eat both. Now the final category of organisms is a decomposer. Now a decomposer is organisms that break down dead plants and animals to get food. Earthworms and insects are decomposers. So are fungi, such as mushrooms. Bacteria are decomposers too. You may think of bacteria as harmful germs, but most bacteria are actually very helpful to other living things. So all of these things are breaking down dead plants and animals so that it is fertilizer for soil. 
Decomposers break down dead plants and animals into uh, nutrients. A decomposer uses some of the nutrients itself for energy and growth. So whatever that decomposer is, that is taking it in, which includes some plants, mushrooms, we've got fungi, earthworms, and insects also. So those ones that are decomposing, they're taking in some of that as food, and then the rest is in the soil. The rest go into the soil where plants can use them. So here are some examples of those, earthworms and fungi, right? They actually have to poop out some of the things that they're eating as they are fertilizing the soil, as gross as that might seem. But it's what we need for our ecosystems. So that is all for today. We've got producers. Producers um, are producing their own food, like plants. Consumers are taking in food, whether it's plants or animals. If they eat only plants, it's called an herbivore. If they eat only animals, it's called carnivore. And if they eat both, omnivore. And final category, decomposers. Those are the ones that break up those dead plants and animals so that the soil is fertilized. Okay, that is all for today with science. Um, you'll also be taking some notes on this. And actually, just a moment, let me see. We're going to do this together. Um, yes, I'll have a separate video um, for uh, the notes that you'll be taking today. And um, but that's all for this video. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.